Hi there learners and welcome to module 2.2 Network Basics of your grade 10 curriculum now within term 3. So in this one we're going to be looking at pans, hands, what is needed to connect to a network and what's needed to connect to the internet. So first things first, when we talk about a network, let's just define once again what a network is. Now remember, a network consists of two or more computing devices. And why do we say computing devices? Because it could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, it could be a cell phone, it could be a tablet, anything like that. Um, sorry, smartphone, not uh, cell phone. Uh, connected through some sort of media. So it could be wired, it could be connecting wirelessly for the purpose of sharing information, right? Because we are sharing data, we're sharing information, we're copying, we're sending, we're doing all of these things. And this is what a network is. So let's go into the personal area network or the PAN. These are small networks. And here we have a picture of an individual sitting at his desk. He has his smartphone, he's got his tablet, he's got his laptop, and he's connecting them all together. Now, this is within his personal space, right? It's a personal area network. Do we have two or more computing devices? Yes, we do. Do we have them connecting through some sort of media? Probably wirelessly because I don't see any cables. Yes. Is the purpose sharing information? Well, that's what it's there for. Okay. So there we have our personal area network. And there it says a network organized around an individual or a few individuals with a range of a few meters. So that is our personal area network. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages. The main purpose and advantage is to automate connections between these various devices, usually mobile devices. However, there are a couple of disadvantages. The range is limited, like we see in the definition itself. The transmission speed can be slow, um, and peripheral devices usually only pair with one computing device at a time. Remember what a peripheral device is? It is any component that is going to be added to the computer system to um, give it more functionality. Okay. Now we have a home area network as well. So a network within the space of your home. This is a small network within a home environment that connects devices such as computers, printers, tablets. Think of your homes. This is your home. This is, let's say, your uh, router. I mean, you are connecting your smartphones wirelessly. Maybe your TV is connected. Maybe you've got Alexa there. Um, you've got a laptop as well. You've got Bluetooth speakers. All of this type of thing. But this is essentially what a home area network is. Now, the main advantages include that users can actually access their data from any computing device within the home. Again, depends how you've set up everything. And you can save money by sharing devices such as a printer. So we can have one printer in the house, um, you know, one scanner if you're going to be doing that as well. And then an internet connection can be shared as well, right? Similar to when you are at school with many of you. Now, here we further have our home area network. And you just need to understand that security can be an issue with wireless networks okay um, and you need to bear that in mind think of your own networks at home is your password secure does your wi-fi even have a password on it so just bear that in mind when it comes to these type of networks now what is needed to connect so when we're setting up a small network we need to look at the hardware we're talking about the computing devices themselves. Hardware that can be shared. Maybe you are going to be needing a switch, right? What does a switch do? It connects computers with cables, okay? What about your router? You are going to be needing a router because this allows devices to be connected to the internet. And today what we actually find is that most routers actually include a built-in switch. So this is why um, usually you'll find at the back of a router you have multiple ports. Um, some routers might have two ports, some might have three or four. That allow you then to run cables from there to various devices or to other places within your house. Okay, so we're still talking about setting up a small network. We're looking at some connection methods wirelessly or with cables. And um, we did mention that 
every computing device must either be wireless enabled or have a network interface controller. And our personal area networks, well, they work most often with Bluetooth. So we know this. We know this icon over here. We're dealing with wireless, right? This is what your network interface controller looks like. And generally, because I see this over here and this faceplate, this tells me that this plugs into a desktop computer and this slots into the motherboard. Um, but even your cell phones have its own um, network card that allows for wireless connectivity. Okay. In our hands or our home area networks, we often have a combination of both wireless and wired. So think about the router that you have at home. Like I mentioned, your router might have ports at the back. So it connects maybe to fiber or ADSL. And from there, um, you connect maybe wirelessly to the router or through the router to the internet. You might have a PC at home that has a network card that then connects either wirelessly or via a cable um, to the internet. So these are just some of the things that we need and that we talk about and the concepts that come up when we are setting up a small network. Right. Now, we also get different types of network interface controllers. So it's not just that which I showed you. Here you can see these ones are made for your wired network interface um, connections. So you will see you've got your port there for your physical cable to plug in. Some of the older laptops used to use this. Um, some of the older PCs as well. And you can see this so that they can connect wirelessly. These days we have these dongles, which literally plug into a USB port and give the laptop or the desktop PC um, the functionality of being able to connect to a wireless network. So if your desktop PC doesn't have a network card, you can get one of these, plug it in, and it will allow um, the PC that functionality. Okay, so it's nice. You can see how, <laughs> how things have moved forward. Right, then on the software side, the software is used to control security and communication within the network. And most of this is built into the operating system of the particular computing device. And if we just go to Windows settings in any of your operating systems, most of what you have with your desktops and laptops, you'll find that you have a network and internet setting there as well. All right, so talking about the internet. We know, first of all, the internet is a large worldwide computer network consisting of computers and networks linked using communication media. So whichever type of media it's going to be. Every device that connects to the internet must have its own IP address. Remember, on the internet, everyone has their own unique IP address. This identifies them within that particular network. Now, to connect the device to the internet, what are you going to need? You're going to need an internet service provider and an internet connection. There we go with our router. There is our uh, network cable. Maybe this is coming from whichever internet service provider we have. Plugs in, allows the router then to take that internet connection and spread it out over a Wi-Fi zone in your home, etc. So let's look at how we connect to the internet. And we've, we've now touched on this before. Our router. What is a router? It is a small electronic device that joins computer networks together. It's used within the home to connect you to the internet. So your little home network to the internet, the global network. We also have hotspots. Now, most of you know what a hotspot is. You can see here there's wireless capability given from this PC and these other devices Sure, that looks like a Game Boy can actually then connect to that. So our Wi-Fi hotspot enables all computers and devices, computers and devices, which have Wi-Fi capability to connect to the router. So these devices need to have wireless capability as well. Otherwise, they won't be able to connect. These devices must be within the range. And this is why they have these lines here. This is the range um, of the Wi-Fi hotspot. So not only must they be in the range, but they have to have access rights to connect to the router. And just think of when you go to KFC or McDonald's or any of these places and they have a Wi-Fi zone, 
you can go in there, you log in, it gives you access, they tell you how much data you can use, and there you go, you end up using it. Then we also need an internet service provider. This is a company, simply put, a company that has a permanent fast connection to the internet. Now ISPs, like these over here, they sell internet access and services to individuals and companies for a monthly fee. And here are a couple of others, some that we know, some that you might not know. But at the end of the day, this is a company that has a permanent fast connection to the internet and they sell you access for a monthly fee. Now, we connect either by a, being wired or wireless. And I'll give you my own example. So where I am, there is no wired connection. In other words, there's no ADSL lines in the ground. There's no fiber. I mean, I'm sure you would have seen around the country um, them digging up in front of residences, laying all these fiber cables. So there are physical lines that then run to your house that will then plug into a little unit against the wall and that will plug into your router and that is a wired connection. So you've got a physical cable that's running from your router to your internet connection. In my case, there is nothing like this. So I'm using wireless technology. So I've also got a router, but my router has a port to put a SIM card in. Some, you could use a dongle as well to connect, but the SIM card then allows me to connect to mobile access, in other words, the nearest mobile tower, and I'm able to get onto the internet like that. Well, it's not great, but <laughs> it does the job. So these are the two ways in which you connect to the internet. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but how do we connect to the different continents and places around the world if this is how we connect? Think about that. Well, think no more. There are things called undersea internet cables. And here you can see how these cables are running all around Africa and where they go to to connect to other places around the world. Yes, you heard me right. There are undersea cables. We've had some internet issues here in South Africa and that is because of these cables um, where some of them have actually been damaged and then that disrupts internet connectivity throughout everyone who is um, connected to these. Okay, now when you use an ISP, um, that cost is based on, you know, the amount of speed you want, the amount of data you want to transfer, things like that. This is why the infrastructure providers then these ones over here, they connect to external providers that link South Africa to the rest of the world. Now, you think I'm lying with this? Well, have a look at this. This is an article, 19th of March, 2024, showing um, the undersea cable chaos. Why South Africa's internet is in crisis? And that's simply because they've been having some undersea cable issues, which they are busy repairing as we speak. So, yes, there are physical cables running under the sea connecting the continents. Okay. Then we have this term fiber to the home. And I'm including a lot of these things because I haven't picked it up in some of the textbooks, but I pick it up in some of the papers. And this is why I'm including it here. FTTH, fiber to the home. This is where fiber lines require routers which are plugged into the fiber router for a fiber connection. Cables may then run from the router to devices in the home. In other words, that fiber is coming from the main lines, whether it's in front of your house or wherever it is, but it's running straight into your house and it's going to plug into a little device that then plugs into your router. Okay, so that's fiber coming straight to your home. You can then decide how you want to connect to that router, wired, you know, via cables or wirelessly. And here we can see an example of fiber coming from the street into the little box over there. It then plugs in from that into your router. Um, you can then see from there it's connecting to the rest of the house, some with physical cables and others wirelessly. So if you do have fiber at home, go and have a look for this. You should see these two devices um, usually mounted against the wall and then a cable running from this one 
through into your router. And this is fiber coming straight into the home. That's what they're talking about, the FTTH. Then last but by no means least, the firewall. So what is a firewall? A firewall is software and sometimes it's hardware, depending on the companies and the infrastructure, that prevents intruders on the internet from accessing a private network which is connected to the internet. So this is your private network, your home network. And there you have your router and you've got a couple of PCs, devices connected to it. So you want to connect to the internet and all it's doing which is very important, is it's preventing intruders from coming from the internet and coming through into your private home network. Now, most of the time, your antivirus software has a built-in firewall and it can do that for you. Larger companies end up using specialized software and sometimes even um, physical hardware to act as a firewall. But yes, folks, that's it for us and this module.